Hello. I logged in the right way. I don't think I'm logged in the right way. Zoom. I'm logged into Zoom. Yep, Andre. Hey, how's it going? How's your how's summer? <laughs> Sorry about that. Here. Okay. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, I just realized uh, I just had a notification pop up and saying that, oh, you have RSVP to this meeting. And that was like during spring, didn't realize that. Wait. No worries. No worries. We're here. What's going on? So, um, so what's up with the STEM PAL program? It's SEEP's not providing the funding? Uh, no, not well. There is a budget cut. That's all I can say. And uh, we used to do like we did plenty of outreach and in reach events, but uh, they decided to not fund that. Yeah. For, for whatever oh, reason. Um, then, oh, just just the outreaches and stuff, but the the program can remain. The program itself is still partially funded, but they have some guidelines that they that they you know. That spelled out that they wish us to follow, um, which is de emphasizing that they the word by word is like de emphasizing STEM file. So they uh, want us to try something new. Um, and that new stuff is something that has been tried before they even yeah. suggested it. Embedded tutors, right? You said embedded tutors. Email. Oh, yeah. yeah, we use embedded tutors all the time. It's this is totally what you're doing is totally different. <laughs> uh, I, I get it, but. Not everybody does. So uh, I think we, um, the good thing is they said de emphasized. They didn't say like eliminate. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that looks like might be just fewer, you know, facilitators that we can bring on board and uh, probably fewer sections um, and, and, and kind of really tap into, um, uh, to, to, Probably having to go to like volunteers route. I'm not sure how that would go, but uh, it's it's worth discussing. Um, and if you have any ideas, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe Halsey Boyd would have some better ideas on how to kind of fund this. Uh, I don't know. So I don't know if you know Halsey. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, was he the the T4E coordinator, the previous one? Uh, T4E is the math lab coordinator and also he was uh doing the uh was it staff resource center coordinator or something he, like that is he like a really tall dude yes yes okay <laughs> I, should remember. I think we had a yeah. different conversation so that was yeah was, was he at the sleep meeting i'm not sure if you were there but um i wasn't at the so was that yesterday i think he went no, to no, the sleep meeting is uh, oh. last it was last thing. I'm getting things mixed together. All right. Anyway, yeah. Mm. Well, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, just getting ready for another semester. I was hoping to use a STEM PAL facilitator in my in-person uh, Calc two, yeah. um, but I don't have anybody. <laughs> okay. I, I I I'd reached out to a couple of people before that and uh oh, here we got somebody coming in who that is oh hey hey nick how's it going hey, good how are you i'm Hello. good yeah. we got we got a couple more minutes i guess uh we'll start soon yeah. um, but joel and i were just talking um but yeah i wanted to get somebody for calc 2 to to run kind of that um, program almost within my class now because I'm working with Queen Macca College. They gave me all their stuff, and it's like beautiful system of mm -hmm. right. Just here's a little bit of information. Here's a couple problems. Here's a little bit of information. A couple problems, all embedded in Canvas, and they have like prerequisite knowledge. Like they'll go over trig at one point. They'll go over other things at one point that you that you need oh, for right. that particular like section. It's really it's really freaking awesome. 
So we need to somehow tell the mouth department about this. <laughs> Next, the Queen yeah, yeah. College has this stuff out there. Yeah. But we could take a look too. I mean, we, we could use some of that too. Yeah. 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 So having somebody in the classroom that could kind of help me run some of the right and I'm kind of trying to run it so that it's backwards that I have basically my worksheets and running facilitating essentially right and trying to yeah. get them going on the problems yeah so hi Lily hi. Hi. a couple people here oh there comes Hainalka yes. I don't know if you want to wait a couple more minutes just to let people come in, or I could wait. Um, I I uh, can oh. probably go all the way to ten thirty ish. Um, okay. And uh, head back to the the department. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. We scheduled but, like, it right you're... during the. Uh, yeah. Was don't worry. If there are any <laughs> I'll be happy to answer. Okay, cool. I have questions too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're, we are recording, so why don't we go ahead and get going? So I'll, I'll just introduce you uh, to people who don't know. This is Joel Huang uh, from the chemistry department, also the coordinator of the STEM PAL program here. And uh, I, I've been, I, I started talking to him about a year ago, figuring out what this is. I kind of used the STEM PAL coordinator in my NC Curtis class, but it, it wasn't really STEM PAL. Uh, they, they never, it never really took off in that class, unfortunately. But uh, I, I do want to use one and, and want to try and figure out how to use this a little bit better and and from what i've seen from what the stats of joel has shown me it, there's some amazing things mathematically speaking that we can do to close some of those gaps between people that are uh, uh underprepared for our courses uh as they come in and, and this might be a good window opportunity to talk about right calculus and and the things that are coming down the pipeline for uh, mathematical people that we are right uh, expected to let anybody jump into Calc 1, uh, regardless of their prerequisite knowledge. And, and, and I think Joel's got kind of a solution for us. So I'll let you go, Joel. Sure. Thanks. Andrea, thanks for the invite and thanks for coming here. Um, usually, if if you come across me to me in the hallway, I, I can't shut up about STEM PAL because I'm really excited. It was something that, uh, that really uh, helped me in my own uh, college learning experience basically flipped uh, everything around and it sounds like a magical pill but but it's not um and it's it's hard to explain it usually is because people often uh say that oh we do tutoring we gotta go to tutoring. but but at the same time if you're if you're in stem pal you you know it's more than that so i think instead of going through my you know original powerpoint slides um for those of us who are here let's do stem pal and, and get a really quick feel of what what this is about. I actually just came out of the uh, department uh, chair council meeting. They were talking about curriculum and talking about, you know, it's, it's a big issue. Um, people are trying to come together and solve it. And people don't have answer keys. People don't know, uh, you know, what it should look like, but they know that they have people. They have people on board that have some experience brought to the table and after some discussion, they can figure something out. And that process, even in curriculum, that's that's what STEM PAL is trying to incorporate. So department meetings, when we're talking about stuff, that's kind of STEM PAL. It's not tutoring. We're not tutoring right now. Uh, and let me just just go ahead and give you an idea of what what it what it feels like. So. Uh, I'm probably going to skip through a bit because uh, a little bit limited on time, but can you guys see my slideshow over here by any chance? Yes, we can. Is it, is it viewable? Okay, so the whole idea yes. in getting students to be excited about tutoring and uh, not, not tutoring, about this program and getting faculty member to be really excited seeing students attend um, one of the, the 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 slogans that we have is why can't you just show me the answer key? Like what what's going on? Uh, and I like to kind of guide everybody through what STEM pal feels like. So 
Uh, first off, have you guys ever been in an escape room before? Thumbs up or yes or no, let me know. So uh, I, I can go through the basics of what an escape room is. Um, you're there to solve something. You're, there's probably a mystery, there's a case, and somebody designs the room, so it's playable. There has to be some way out, right? And you're you're in a group. You basically kind of collect clues to eventually get out of the, the, the escape room. So in order for an escape room to be fun and challenging, there has to be a room that's designed to, to you know, be solvable. Um, you as the instructor, you design the room, you know where to put the clues, and you have full faith that the students should be able to get out because you have been teaching them the skills in lectures already. So then you toss into this escape room, there has to be clues there. And then there's this very interesting role called the game master. <clears throat> the game master kind of just stands there and there are things that the game master won't do. The game master knows where the clues are because the game master has solved this room on their own before. The game master knows and probably participated in designing up this room with the instructor, so worked really closely with the instructor. But what the game master would not do is stand in front of the board and start teaching. It's like, look under the sofa. There you go. And then, you know, look under that rug. Yay. And you have successfully ran out of the room. No. The, the, the people who do that don't understand what an escape room is. It ruins the fun. It basically takes the... Uh, the, 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 that, that fulfillment away from, from, the, from the players. So what we're trying to do here is develop this system where students can go to. It's kind of like a third place, you know, between classroom and home, a third place where they can really hone their skills and with the help of the game masters who will, who will never, never confirm their answers. If you ask the game master, am I doing it right? The game master is like, give it a shot, right? You already learned this in class. So let's go ahead and try this out. This is a worksheet that we have designed in January, um, you know, uh, and we have tried in our one of our STEM PAL trainings that uh, that take place before the semester. We're going to have one tomorrow uh, with uh, old uh, season facilitators these, these and, and uh, you know, helping out the news. So you can take a look. I'll, I'll give you a minute just to read through on what the first or zeroth workshop looks like. And thumbs up if you're done reading this, so I can kind of gauge. Okay, Nick is done, Andre is done. As you can probably see, I'm the game master now. That's what I'm doing. Lily and Hinaka, if I'm just saying that, okay. Lily, we're good. And I'm sorry if you feel, feel being put on the spot, but this is how a STEM pal session feels like. It's like, okay. Oh, now I'm going to be the facilitator and you guys will be the group to try to get out of this escape room. So taking a look at this, this is what the STEM PAL model is about. The facilitators, they will never confirm answers. Even if the students get the, the answer right, they will just ask questions like, what did the process look like? And then the players, the students who attend these STEM PAL sections will have to rely on each other. It's like, is this the best answer that we can get? So, um, anybody want to volunteer to be the the marker holder right here? If not, I'll just randomly pick. Um, everybody's getting nervous. This is how STEM pal feels like. I'm not kidding. Okay. Uh, why don't Dr. Shoa, you be my volunteer? Would that be okay? Sure. Okay, because you were the latest, so no, I'm not putting on you. So here's the first question. Question number one, in front of your group members right now, right, in front of every, manually calculate 293487 plus 8779812 plus 
1982347195. Go ahead. You may begin. Do I have ability to write on the screen? I think so. I think so. Uh, so uh, we uh, learned in class, the first thing I should do is maybe write those uh, three numbers on top of each other with uh, the places lining up. So two, nine, three, four, eight, seven, and then uh, two, one, eight, nine. You are the facilitator, Joe? I am, yes. All right, so I'm gonna make intentional mistakes then. Okay, sure. All right, eight, seven, seven, nine, eight, one, two. Okay, thanks, Shua. I'll, I'll stop you right there because next up, I'm going to ask our next student, Andre, to continue where, where Shua left off at. Okay, let's see if I remember how to get my pen going. And notate, where is it? Hmm. Looks like they changed it on me. <laughs> there's a view options. Yeah, but... there's a drop down menu. And we get the kind of experience. Thank, thank you, Hanalka. Uh, what what students were run into because we have STEM pal sessions that are in person, which are a lot easier, where you can just grab a marker and show show what you're doing in front of people. Uh, but online, it can get a little bit trickier. But nonetheless, well, I'm going to cut this demo a little bit short over here. But this is what it feels like. Uh, on the back of the student's head, they would know it's like, I learned this in class. I, Professor Andre and Professor Hanaka mentioned this. I'm sure I've seen this. But, and, and now I'm on my own. Yes, you're on your own. And the facilitator is like, you, you must, you're, you're, your professor gave me, right, designed this worksheet for me. So you must have already went through this. So let's try this out, you know. And in front of people. So one of the really crucial things is something like this. This math is not undoable. You just need time. And what it does for the students is that it kind of nudges and forces the students to have to come to terms with how much understanding they have. Because as instructors, you probably see students, you know, thinking like, oh yeah, uh, you know, Professor Shua did it, and I understood all of it, so I must understand all of it, too. You know, that's not necessarily the case. So it's a lot of hands-on, and which is why it's so important to get the right people to facilitate, because this escape room starts crumbling if the game master starts standing in front of the board and reteach the material. Then it becomes like, oh, let me, oh, you teach clearer, so I'm sitting here and it's like, oh, that's so much more interesting. Now I get it. And guess what? On the exam where they can't confirm their answers, they, they still struggle to, to, to come to terms with, am I okay with this answer? So what happens usually is we have multiple groups. They calculated this on the first week, you know, and then they compare answers and not all of the answers are correct, you know, or, or, or consistent. And then they troubleshoot. It's like, where did I get wrong? And then game master is like, well, let's let's figure it out. Let's, you know, how how would you find out how to troubleshoot this? So there's critical questions after critical questions to get people uh, think about their process on on getting to the answer. So let me try to erase all of this. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Oh, there we go. So in a nutshell, um, what we're doing in STEMPAL is the peer-assisted learning that's based on PLTL. I mean, there's going to be a question that at the end that I like to answer before anybody asks this. But there is STEMPAL on campus, and there is also PAL on campus. And a lot of times, people get these confused. And uh, we, we started out having the PAL name first, but now... Uh, you know, the, the the tutoring center, the L LRC, decide to, to use the PAL name. Uh, so there are some things that we kind of have to talk about on what the differences are. First difference, we use the peer-led team learning, which is what you just experienced. 
there's a uh, huge collaborative, not tutoring, as, as the pal would also tell you. And the really important thing is that the program is set uh, where students would know that this is not remediation. It's not because I'm doing bad. So we encourage as instructors, like, are you doing great in this class? Join a STEM pal. Are you struggling in this class? Join a STEM pal. Or it's like, do you like a challenge? Do you love being challenged? Go to a STEM pal. And are you tired of running away from challenges? Go join a STEM pal because getting challenged is, is the main thing. So I'll, I'll skip through this, but we put a lot of emphasis on our facilitator recruitment. We're, we're not trying to recruit the, the know-it-alls and we, we, we recruit not only knowing the material, but also knowing how to lead and guide uh, their, their, their participants without giving away the answer and just keep on looping until uh, not letting them off the hook until they have reached mastery. So they get to ask more questions. They have training. Every Friday afternoon, I meet with the facilitators to kind of uh, do a quick debrief on how each week went and uh, what to do for the next week. It's simple and it works because guess how we came to mastery and are able to teach students. We, we, we didn't mind going through and figuring out what what it takes to be the content expert so that's what we did and for the student side this is very appealing because if you are committed to joining the weekly stem pal sessions outside of class they can earn up to a 23 grade bump or on average 23 percent grade bump i'm going to show you uh, that in a bit improves problem solving skills because we're really viewing ourselves as instructors as role models um you know, how do you not run away from challenges? If you're doing a research project, what do you need to do? There's no answer key in the lab, uh, you know, doing when you're doing uh, frontier research. So it basically gives them an idea of what it feels like to, to be in, in a scientific lab, in a STEM lab. And what uh, instructors find out is that then the students become almost indestructible. You can ask them any question Okay, like hard questions, like challenging questions, and students instead of running away, it's like I don't have the answer. Okay, I'm not. Gonna, they would actually start chipping things away. So, uh, for example, like total ionic equations, net ionic equations, they they have that bring it on mentality, and it's something that all instructors love. Uh, so, our facilitators uh, really are are you know, like one of the pillars to to making this work. And it creates a strong sense of community, uh, not just among students, but across students and faculty members. Effective study techniques, you can take a look. And then in a group of three, four people, no more than that, so that everybody gets enough stage time and one shared marker. So you, when you have the marker, everybody looks at you. You know, there's, there's that pressure. And facilitators do not lecture. That's really important. Um, the, the, uh, the, the other other you know, tutoring or LOC services, they, they, they do not, you know, emphasize this part. It's like, yeah, you can teach them. And, and that, I think that, that really uh, diminishes the, the experience of what the students can have. And even if the students get the correct answers, the facilitators do not confirm and say, that's it. It's like, what do you think? Okay. The process you said looks fine. Okay. Let's move on. It's like, really? Is that the correct? No, let's move on. You you basically saw that your whole process is airtight. So that you know that's the best answer you can have. Let's move on. And of course, the facilitators know if the students got it or not. So at, at the end, you know, uh, across half the semester, the students get it. It's like if you're still asking me, it's like to check step four, then probably I, you know, I I, I need to go, uh, still go back and check. But um the dynamics change really interestingly throughout the semester. So not teach the lecture, uh, not teach uh, or lecture, but uh, help the students, guide students until they're mostly sure. And then students work on one shared uh, sheet that you have designed either yourself or with the facilitators. Um, so you design the escape room with input from the facilitators. The facilitators know what to do. They rehearse that escape room on a weekly basis with you or either uh, with me. Uh, however you want to do it. And 
Here's a uh, stem pal effect. So really quickly, this is uh, from Sac State because we work really closely with Sac State. They have an awesome pal program over there. And, you know, across biochemistry, math, stat, and engineering has also implemented the pal model as well. They have an obvious grade bump. And this is not convincing to the higher up saying, because like, of course, students who go to tutoring, they're, they're, they, they're more determined and those students are better. They're the cream of the crop. Of course, they're going to do better. But one really important thing that I want to show you is that um, this has an overall blanket effect. Um, it helps close the equity gap. Um, and, and let me show you our own data that uh, I've collected. So it's really exciting. But uh, for my Chem 305 average grades, uh, you can see the grade bump. Uh, of course, people who attend PAL will do better, who, who, who don't. But here's the thing where I really want to emphasize you guys' work on math. Because on week one, I sent out this math sense survey. And it's basically questions like, oh, solving for x, uh, fractions, in a relationship between A times B, if it's greater than zero, you know, things like th these. And I collect data. And this math sense survey score goes up to seven points. And what I have been seeing is it has a direct correlation. What I'm saying is, yes, this is, this is I'm, you know, letting you guys know that you guys are doing extremely important jobs here because the math sense that the students had going into the class pretty much predicts 16 weeks later. If they don't know how to solve for X, if they don't know algebraic, you know, or fractions or how to uh, logarithms, stuff like that, they're not going to pass because when we get to stoichiometry, calculating the amount, limiting reagents, percent yields, they're not going to be able to handle that. Um, but if they have a strong math sense, then passing is kind of almost like a given. You, you can understand everything that chemistry has to offer. Now, if a student participates in STEM PAL consistently, and when we're talking about consistently, we're talking about eight, 10 weeks plus, you know, if they are willing to go in week after week after week to face that challenge, to face their challenges in math, to face the material on a weekly, being encouraged at the same time, that gap diminishes. So let me show you this. Even with the student that has zero math sense coming in, if they're willing to put up with the work and to not run away from challenges, they can actually pass this class no problem. And it's not by lowering standards. It's actually encouraging letting them know that if they do this on a weekly basis, if they invest on a weekly one hour time to get challenged, not run away from it, they can pass this class and they can get the letter grade that they want. So this is extremely encouraging. Um, you can see that the R square value basically disappears, you know, and, and, and the correlation kind of disappears. And this correlation uh, exists to all the way to Chem 420. I've been doing 420 as well. Um, you know, the organic chemistry um, too as well. The, 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 that, that sense of logical thinking, you know, the, the relationships between A and B, how, how A goes to B, how to think of multiple threads, multiple, you know, possible solutions of X, you know, how, how, why does X equal to plus and uh, positive negative two, you know, uh, is it both is at the same time? No, 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 it's, it's two different paths that can get to the same solution. So it, it really does correlate to how they can do in chemistry and I can say physics too. And, you know, if they want to get in bio, that helps a lot too. So this is what it looked like online during the pandemic. Um, I just want to show you a couple of photos that we have. We have Halloween, uh, we have Palantines. We had Halloween last year again. This year earlier, we had a STEM PAL facilitated pre-semester training. And then we have multiple outreach events around that's unfortunately been cut by SEEP. They say, no, let's not do that. I don't know, but you know, there's some clarity. And uh, with, with the faculty members, I'm pretty sure we can PAL things through, PAL things, get it? So we don't know the answer key, um, we can, but we're going to get through this because we, we, we want to. Um, you know, in reach events. And then uh, here's a frequently asked question that, that probably has it. What's the difference between STEM PAL and PAL program? 
unfortunately, because the names are so similar, um, we are considering like, what do we do uh, so that when people mention this program, people know that, okay, this is th th this is what I, what I want to be, you know, supporting. Um, and one thing that I can tell you is uh, this is our undergraduate research poster section. We encourage our powerful facilitators to do research. Um, and the research that they do is reflecting on their own PAL sessions, brainstorming, coming up with research ideas, collecting data, and discussing with the faculty members, putting together a poster. And this was uh, the first poster session that we had last spring, um, which is our uh, chemistry department undergraduate research uh, kind of like symposium. Well, we have uh, a, on, on uh, the other part of our department is we have undergraduate research programs, but STEM PAL allows students to also participate in that, not knowing the answer key, but let's figure out attitude. And here are our facilitators. We have Remy and Sharon, both awesome facilitators. Uh, you know, instructors love when they have them in the class because they they basically just bring in a positive can-do attitude to the entire class. And you know how a great, you know, responsive class feels like. And they had their poster sessions there presented. On the side, we also have uh, uh, Jennifer also presenting uh, their findings. And then we also brought back our, our, our posters back to Sac State. So they also have a PAL poster session. Um, and we have uh, on the, you know, Sharon on top. And uh, the, the, the lady over here is Jennifer Lundmark. Uh, she is responsible for helping me catch the, the STEM PAL bug um, because their, their PAL program is, is really uh, so vibrant with energy. They're, it's it's uh, unbelievable. So uh, that's why it's like, we need this. We need this at Sac City. Um, so Tahan on the bottom uh, left, and then Jennifer and Sharon also went to their poster session and presented and got raving reviews. They, their, the quality of research, the whole package, how to improve STEM PAL, where to place the sessions because they're outside of class. Do we do it before the class or after the class or on the weekends? You know, how does that affect attendance? how to get people to open up. And there's also other posters like, what kind of music can we play to get people to open up? Because overcoming that fear is, is the key, is the key to what we're trying to do over here. Uh, not just having superstar lectures, which I'm, I'm sure that all of you are, uh, not just that, but hey, you can do that too. So just some special things, path facilitators. Uh -huh. That uh, picture was from last semester too, wasn't it? Just because yeah, Tahan yeah. was brand new. Yeah, uh -huh. was that just? Yeah, Tan was just brand new. That was from last semester, wasn't it? Yeah, in the springtime. Yeah, this is from last past May, or just a couple of months ago. So um, exciting news! Um, so this is basically what we're doing. Our vision is not just um, yeah, tutoring has its place. I, I'm not dissing that, but what we're trying to do is really empowering them having students look at us like in department meetings, we don't know the answer keys either. And we're trying our best to figure something out. Why don't you guys do the same too? And, and really empowering the students. So if you ever come into, you know, uh, natural sciences building, you'll, you'll see people holding whiteboards in the fishbowl, even in the hallway. It's like, oh, I, I was, I'm stuck. Let, let's sit down and pal things through. Let's let, you know, let, so, so not being really self conscious about, uh, being put on the spot. I think that's that's one of the things that we're trying to do here. Anyway, um, thanks for listening, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, just to kind of add to, uh, I, I know, uh, so one of the things that the tutors come with are worksheets, right? Uh, and either the teacher creates it with the tutor, with the facilitator, I call them the tutors, sorry. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, but here I, I worked with Joseph and Araceli last semester and Joseph found all kind of the, the stuff for Calc 1, uh, really, and pre-calculus as well, like uh, little worksheets from Sac State. Sac State's already got them all, all made up and ready to go. So we just need to kind of make sure we're implementing the right ones at the right time. But my hope would be, I think, uh, for me and what I see in uh, the conferences I've been to lately, talking about the flip class model and how we're supposed to kind of try and run groups in our in our in our classrooms is we could almost run them as these STEM pal things and hopefully have a facilitator in there. And maybe maybe that's where some of the funding stuff can come from, Joel. I don't know uh, where we get 
just uh, these embedded tutors or these right or these right pal facilitators in our in our actual classes and helping us right go around and uh, help the students figure this out in that that great way that you've uh, set up here. So awesome, thank you. Any questions for Joel about it? So you mentioned this this is being done outside of class. Yes. And so the peer tutors or, or the pals, we them, the facilitators. We call them facilitators, yes. <laughs> I'm looking try, at my notes. <laughs> got it. We, we try to stay away from the word tutor. Uh, yeah, they, we call them facilitators. Um, so the facilitators set up the, their, it's kind of like office hours where they the students can go in and, and work on these worksheets. Yes, so that's what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, we're going to have facilitators come in. We're going to go through some basic training, some almost like interview process, because uh, some 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 students come and say, God, I want to do tutoring. And they can listen to it's like if, if this is what you, you know, if, if this aligns with your goal, you're more than welcome to join in. But if not, now you you probably want to, you know, say if, if you want to explore other opportunities, you can. Uh, but typically, people stick around. Uh, but, but either way, tomorrow we're going to go through a couple of classes and see which classes have facilitators available. And then there's going to be a session where we take a look at all the uh, different sections of, say, for Chem 305 or Chem 400. And then figure out a schedule that works for uh, the facilitators themselves, as well as being closely knit to like right after lecture or right before lab, something like that. So we can work things out. And typically it's an ongoing process because when the semester launches on week one, we hope to have, you know, the schedule uh, schedules out. So the students who are interested can join. Um, but uh, sometimes attendance can be hit or miss. Sometimes we have sessions that have, oh, we have, you know, six to eight people or 20 people for that matter. Tohan was having like 20 people uh, every week. And that was a little bit hard to manage because everybody needs stage time. And, and we can't, we, we can't, we have to make sure that the groups that we have are uh, at most eight to 10 uh, to, to have everybody have the chance to, to kind of discuss. So, uh, but sometimes we have, uh, you know, no attendance on, on a given week. And then on our weekly meeting with the facilitators, uh, we was like, okay, um, let's try it out for another week or let's let's switch the time and send out a notification to the students. So it's a very iterative, uh, iterative that's how you see it, process. And uh, that's why there's a ton of faculty input, faculty um, uh, involvement in this. Whereas uh, the other tutoring services, typically the students are on their own. They design their own things and, you know, they, 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 they have, in a sense, they, they can try whatever they want. Um, but over here, we just have direct uh, faculty input, faculty um, commitment and advertisement to the students. So typically, even though attendance can be, you know, sometimes hit or miss, but the overall attendance that we're talking about is a couple of hundred visits um, per semester. And that's not something that the other tutoring centers can actually bring about because you know, sometimes the student just comes in, I, I bombed a, an exam, can you help me? And oh, thanks, and then bye. But no, we're asking for weekly commitment. So that's something that we keep on communicating, uh, communicating in our classrooms. Thank you. Also, yeah. are the facilitators paid? And how do you pay them? They have been paid. And with the data that, you know, there's a lot of traction going on. We started out with four people, um, you know, was uh, during the, and that was right before the pandemic. And I just got a couple of students, like, I like to try the PAL model that Sac State is doing. Are you guys on board? And a couple of, you know, students like, yes, let's try it out. And then the pandemic hit. So we had to pivot into this whole online thing. But Fortunately, um, we have had SEEP funding, funding all of our efforts up to spring, and then we re applied for SEEP funding again. Um, and based on what they're hearing, they uh, the higher-ups still have, uh, still learning what the difference is between the STEM pal and everything else. So they, they see us as, oh, just another, let's cut the budget. So 
Um, just, just in short, our budget has been cut um, by, I think, like a third is 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 away. So this semester, we're just trying to have to be, uh, you know, uh, carefully man managing like how many hours each facilitators can actually get. So we hope to still pay them to up to, you know, 10 hours, eight hours per week uh, for their work, for their prep work, for attending the weekly run through meetings and uh, for leading their sessions. Um, but we are not sure. Um, and that, that's, you know, further discussion on, on how that's going to look like. I have because PLTL, the peer lead team learning model is a is implemented globally. And I just went to one of their conferences. I know that one um, university in, in, in London, the Queens College or something like that, they run solely on volunteers. Um, there's also one in Georgia, Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Georgia, uh, where they, or I forgot, they, they run only on weekends, you know, and, and uh, so, so there are many different flavors to this, but the whole core value is to make sure that the facilitators, these game masters, they know what they're doing. They don't accidentally turn the session into a merely just a lecture or just a tutoring set. So, so that's, that, that's what we hold dearly. And every facilitator knows uh, that, that they, 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 they have a job that's more than just, just a tutor, if that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So funding, yes, we, we try to do our best to, to pay all our facilitators. And uh, tomorrow's training, you know, we're, I, I'm going to have to kind of break the news and, you know, we, we'll probably have to stick for leading probably just one or two sections this semester. So there is going to be, and, and we're, we're, we started small anyway, so we're comfortable with that either way. Yeah, Joel is also. You got some. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Joel is also willing to pay them out of pocket if needed, you know. Well, yeah, so once Shua just wires me the money, I'll be happy. Well, but no, uh, I think out of, yeah, so in the past, you know, bringing snacks, bringing food, been happy with that. And uh, we have had uh, the luxury in the past year to tap into the fundings to, to purchase, you know, some, some refreshments and uh, food so we can, we can feed the facilitators at, at training events. Um, but if it comes down to like, you know, like just buying pizza, I, it, it, this is recorded, so I'm not just going to say that but yeah, yeah i'm totally happy um these facilitators are the 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 engine behind making all of these things work and it it's totally worth it these these these, these students these facilitators they do a lot of heavy lifting unimaginable amount of work and i'm inspired by them to, to be honest um of, of how dedicated they are All right. Nice. Thank you, Joel. Oh, Any other questions for Joel? I, I have one more. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries. Um, so do you collaborate with all the other chemistry courses um, to bring this about, or is this just for one instructor's course? How do you go about when, you know, you might be on a different uh, section or a different chapter? The answer but, is um, yes. So yes, we do, and a lot of the classes now. Now we have uh, STEM Pal across the Chem 300, 305, 400, 401, and even 420 and Bio 402. Um, 430 has had experience physics 410, 310, 420, and a lot of this is just word of mouth. So th this is what I mean. Um, this is how our Chem 400 started where a Chem 305 facilitator doing an awesome job went to just decide to go to 400 and realized that, oh, there's no STEM pal. So he just reached out to the instructors like, can we get the STEM pal? You know, can we do pal in this class? And what is that? So it's very student initiated. Um, so none of these would be done if the students did not have that, that drive to, to, to just keep on extending to the next class, to the next class. So now I'm here because you know, Andre heard about it and and saw what's going on, and it's like, oh, you know, this is probably a good idea. 
So, uh, <laughs> I did, you know, I can say that for sure. I've been trying it in my class and it's hard to facilitate in that way and not give the answers and not just start lecturing. Uh, so, but I want to <laughs> keep trying and I'm going to keep going. So with it in my stats class and my calculus class. So I got boards, uh, I'm getting in the right classroom now so I can have enough boards for the groups and I'm just going to give them one pen and I'm going to let them go to town on some of my worksheets. I give them and see what happens. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. And there, there is, and I, I do the same thing too. So I totally see what you're doing. And then coverage of material, right? How do you cover as much if you dedicate that? So this is one of the advantages of the, the STEM PAL because it's outside of class. So you can have this really marinate and it's pure lead. So I think sometimes the, uh, the professor brings some sort of nerve wrackingness um, to to the room too, you know, as 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 approachable as I want to be. You know, I hope to be approachable ever. Um, but these facilitators are almost kind of like uh in, in terms of ideas like your your replicas you really they they want the students to do well they know what it takes and they just want to see them be on the same journey so um you know there's a lot of trust between um faculty members and the facilitators to know what they're doing and 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 another thing to answer uh Hinalka's question which is what if you have multiple instructors at the same course for example we have multiple 305 and multiple 400s um, what I do is I just send out the worksheets, all of them to, to all the instructors so they know what we're going through and give suggestions on if anything needs to be tweaked. And then um, the facilitators will basically, uh, you know, if the, if the faculty wants a facilitator, then they have to work with a facilitator to, to know, you know, what, what the weekly progress looks like. So there, there is... Uh, we have tried things out having just one worksheet or like Shua has done for like, uh, you know, having two different sets, different paces, but the worksheet bank can be exactly the same. So you're kind of just picking the modules right? on, on chapter three this week. So the facilitator will pick the chapter three and then, oh, you're on chapter six. So you can pick the chapter six worksheets and the facilitators would have to rehearse uh, to, to prep for those sections. So it's, it's uh, it, it is a lot of you know dedication to to make this work. All right. Great. Thank you, Joel. I know you're really busy right now. Uh, thank you for taking your time out of your busy day. I want to I want to respect that, right? And uh, we're gonna I think call it here. Uh, mm -hmm. And if uh, you all have any questions, I'm sure uh, you can uh, send me a message or send Joel a message, and uh, and and he'll answer it for you. So Absolutely. thank you again. I appreciate right. your time. Take care. Have a great semester. Bye. 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 Bye.